I'm your host Jason Park and behind me I have a 1995 Toyota Supra. This car Fast and the Furious made famous. This car is not only a legend, but it's highly sought after 20, 30 plus years after its release. I can't wait to take it for a spin. Lion Godzilla, let's go. Ego. She get in my ride for a limited time, then look in my eyes and don't go. Bugatti, Bugatti, Bugatti. All of my shooters got two bodies, and they on the hunt for a new body. But I never pay for the cool naughty. Right up the fuck you gonna do body. Promise you. Man, who the hell we going to rob? Mickey Mouse? So right now I'm here with Kyrie in his beautiful Supra. Tell us, what made you get the Supra? So the Supra was actually a gift. So it wasn't even like, I just went <laughs> out and purchased it. Yeah, yeah. It was actually given to me when I was 16. Okay. Yeah, so it was given to me when I was 16 by my godparents. Okay. Um, as an early graduation gift from high school. Wow, okay, shout out to the grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so clearly they knew that that you love the Supra. Oh yeah. What made you fall in love with the Supra? So I, so originally I had a GSX. Okay. Right. So I, I would drive my GSX around and um, was that was, influence from Fast and Furious? Yeah, Fierce? it was influence okay, okay, from okay. Fast and Furious. It was actually an influence. So that was actually the first car that I ever had. Yep. So I pull up and they're just like, hey, like you want a car? And I'm just like, sure, why not? And so it actually wait, like the GSX wasn't a car, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. They're like, hey, you want a car? I was like, yeah, sure, why not? So they started pulling the cover off, and I saw the wing. And I was like, <laughs> and then it kept going, and yeah. I saw the hood, and I was like, I was like, oh, there's no way it's a manual. <laughs> okay. I, they opened the door, and they're like, oh, it's a six speed. And I was like, ain't no way it's a turbo. <laughs> <laughs> they popped the hood, and there go the two turbos yeah. sitting right there. And I was like, I was like, I'm the luckiest kid alive yeah, right yeah. now. Like, luck, luckiest kid alive yeah. ever at that point. In time. So, so this car you've had in the family now for what, 15? 12 years I've owned I personally have owned it for 11 okay but they actually bought it back in 95 off the showroom of Toyota so this was their car yeah this was and, their, they, and they gave it yeah to it you. was actually like their car that they would drive oh, oh my god yeah so like they actually drove it around they you know they would actually take trips in it and they're like yeah like it's a great car it's fun to drive yeah and I was like well yeah like it's it's a super it's a like, super yeah, yeah. <laughs> why wouldn't it be fun to drive so yeah man like that what really made me fall in love with it though is the fact that they trusted me enough yeah. to give it to me. Yeah. And so from that is really what kind of bred my love for it. Like, I mean, I've always loved them, but right. like this one in particular, like it means so much to me. Right, right, right. That it's kind of beyond words. For so me. if someone offered you 120,000 right now for it, would you sell it? No. Now you have to, you have to actually offer me like an astronomical amount of money for me to even consider it. Yeah, yeah. Like that's, like you have to offer me like almost like a million dollars. Me even consider the right. offer of a million dollars like, right. to take it serious. Like, ah. Well, I mean, if you think about it, like how much, like how many supers are left on the road? I don't know that number off the top of my head, but there is a place called the Super Registry. Shout out to superregistry.com. Shout out. Um, 
that you can actually go and check and verify. And they have verified VIN numbers of every single super from around the world. Okay. So they actually have like a running Excel spreadsheet and a whole running website that tells you how many supers are exactly left on the road. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, so it's in the family. You won't sell it. It's like a million dollars. What have you done to the car since ownership? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> so... Originally, I started with D2 coilovers, so I went D2 coilovers, and then I actually went ahead and actually installed an updated um, radio system for it because, you know, one right. Apple CarPlay, yeah, yeah, yeah. functionality, kind of got tired of the cassette yeah. player, yeah. you know, uh, but then I actually blew the head, <laughs> so that led me into all of my engine modifications, right? So, like, I have CP racing pistons, CP camshafts, you know, or I'm sorry, not CP camshafts, but Brian Cower camshafts. I have the Street Monster or the Torque Monster kit from Powerhouse Racing, right? I actually have an AM Infinity. I have the SCG1 wideband as well as my boost controller. So like, oh, and then what was my other thing? Uh, can't remember the other thing. I got one more. Oh, yeah. standard cooler. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. The front mount. Obviously, yep. you need that with a bigger turbo. So uh, no, so that led me into modifications for that because I was like, hey, like at this point, motor's gone right i'm rebuilding the motor anyways i might as well make it last make it last right okay so and typically what on the supers people run 19s and 20s but you're running 18s yes why did you choose the 18s over a bigger wheel so i chose 18s just because of tire size um so i actually like a little more width in my tire mm -hmm. than other people do so like 19s are really good for a wider tire in the back if you're running like 325s 315s you know for more traction me personally though amount of power I make I don't need to go that wide yeah so I just chose 18s one because I also like how it looks in the wheel well but then also just because you know why spend more money on tires when I don't need to so speaking on that how much horsepower are you actually pushing in the Supra so on pump it's about 615 to 650 if I remember correctly but on E85 around the 800 mark Ugh, 800? Yeah, 800? Oh you know what? It's like it's it's almost like every time you see a Supra, you can expect for it to just have monstrous power. Yeah. Now is that is that 800 like reliable power? That's yeah, 800 reliable. Yeah, wow. like it's 800 to the wheel. Okay. Right. Even the six is to the wheel. So and it's always been reliable. Like I've never had a dip in power ever since I built it. Okay. So I mean, every time I get it, it goes. So, okay. So you want? Okay. Uh, okay. So let's say somebody just got their Supra and it's stock right outside of giving them the advice of like leave it stock for resale value but outside of that what would be the first modification that you would tell like a brand new uh, super owner that you would go for if you looking back on it in hindsight if there was like one thing you wanted to do what would it be first coils okay. i'd still go coils yeah because they're 20 they're 25 30 plus year old cars right so with that comes shocks and struts they're gonna go out regardless mm -hmm. so i would say go get coils and on top of getting coils right upgrade your wheels and upgrade your tires and then from there develop a feel for it mm -hmm. because there it makes no sense to do engine and power modifications to a vehicle if you don't know how it drives mm -hmm. already because then you can't correct right right and it, like you're that that baseline of power is going to be your baseline of it and you're just like oh well it should feel like this and then something breaks right right right, right? when right. it's like no beforehand it's like no this doesn't feel right mm -hmm. so now i need to go in figure out what it is and prevent it from actually breaking or breaking down somewhere right right okay so you have uh you actually have another super i do okay so what what year is that super how many miles what's going on with that super what, what, what plans do you have for it so I actually have a 94 Supra, um, and it's actually white just like this one, just has a lot, lot, lot more fadeage in the paint. Uh, so my plan for that one actually is to give it to my oldest son. Keep it in the family. So you keep it in the family, right? So my plan is to give it to him, but really and truly what I really want him to do is, before I give it to him, I really want him to work, right? Because like, you don't appreciate that he's given to yeah. you unless you've worked to but you're them. keeping the lineage kind of like how your grandparents did to you right. you're going to do that to your son and hopefully he does the same thing to his son exactly yeah, yeah so it's just one of those that like i really want him to work and earn for it right because i mean i'm gonna give it to him regardless but why not like but you know he can look at it every day in the garage and be like okay i got that's gonna be mine that's I mean, mine yeah, that's I mean, mine. Let me go in and work for it because like even now <laughs> at six like he rides around in mine he's like daddy where's your super yeah, yeah. Da Daddy, let's go fast. Oh, he don't want to ride in the Volkswagen? Oh, man. <laughs> he asks every day, can we take the Supra to school? Yeah. Can you pick me up in yeah. it? Like, I'm like... Okay, see, that, that's a good segue. How do people treat you when they see the Supra? Because I know that that we originally met, right? Right. Because of the Supra. Right. So, so 
how do people treat you at, at the pump or when you take them to school or when they meet you in the wild? Like, how does that work? So, uh, those three different scenarios. So, normally if I'm taking him to school, right, his teachers and his classmates don't really understand, like, what it mm -hmm. is. And I actually like that. Yeah. I, it's actually really refreshing to be in that kind of environment because no one's looking at you constantly. No mm -hmm. one's, like, trying to come up to you and ask you questions. There, and no, no qualms against people asking questions, yeah, right? Yeah. But, like, sometimes you can get a little overbearing. Yep. Right? And then even at the pump, like, if, I, if there's another car guy, car girl that's there, and they're like, oh, my God, that's a super, like, they'll come up, ask a couple questions, you know. And I'm more than happy to answer questions. Now, we go to car meets, and you've been there. Yeah, yeah. We pull up the car meets. Yeah. And it's like everyone floods it. Yeah. Right? Like, they're flooding it. They're trying to ask 97 questions. I'm Wait, trying to the, get the, out the, the car. The super's almost more famous, like a celebrity, compared to, like, a Lambo or a Ferrari. Right? Like, you can it park is. next to them, and they'll be like, oh, a super. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean... Yeah, man. Like, yeah, so places I go, especially when there's car people, they know. Mm -hmm. Like, they're coming out the building, right? Yeah. Coming out, like, oh my God, it's a Supra. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, hey, man, like, hi. Hello. Yeah, yeah. You know, or like, I've actually gotten it before where like people have just tried to be my friends just because yeah. I have a Supra. And shout, yeah. out to my, shout out to my friends because my friends actually like like me for who I yeah, am yeah, and yeah. not because of the car I drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, like, it's, it's just double edged sword, man. Double edged sword, no matter where you go. Ladies, I just want to let you know, Kyrie is a single. So if you're in the cars and you're a little hottie for toddy, <laughs> his Instagram's right here. <laughs> it's actually in that back quarter oh, panel right there. Right there too. Right there. <laughs> okay, so what's like the what's like the the craziest thing that you've done in this car in Mexico? <sighs> craziest thing was hit 175. Yep. That must have been gnarly in Mexico, right? <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about scared? I I am not a very easily scared person, right. right? Done a lot of things in my life, done a lot of things in my career. Hitting 175, that yeah, scary, very scary. Because when you really think about, it, you're like, oh, like what's it? But it's like you're almost close to 200 miles per hour, and one wrong move at that speed, yeah, is is you like you're done. Did it feel safe though? Or did it, did, uh, I, I get it, you're scared because the speed in any car is going to be scary. Right. But did you at least have a sense of confidence? And I say that because like, what always drives me crazy is when you have people in like Corollas or like baseline Civics <laughs> driving <laughs> like it's a sports car, right? And you see them on the freeway, they're like going 90 miles and I'm like, yo, this car is not built to be doing this, right? I mean, clearly it can go, but right. I'm just saying like, when, when you were at those higher speeds, did the Super at least feel planted? Yeah. Oh, it definitely felt planted. Um, my biggest qualm with it at those speeds or anything above 135 is that what if I stomp, I mean I'm already stomping, but if I stomp even more, my back end will spin. Wow. Even at even at 130 plus. Yeah, 130 plus, my back end will still spin. So wow. I have to always be cognizant and remember that like, hey, like I'm going as fast as I am, but if I try to go any faster, I try to push more boost in, my back will break open. Got it's just it. like all right and at that point it's it's yeah yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. might as well just pray yeah yeah no i get it i get it so okay so what's the greatest experience that you've had with the super outside of like your your, your grandparents giving it to you like right. outside of that like what's been like this one moment that you've like oh that solidifies it for me bringing my oldest son home in it okay so when my oldest son was born back in 2016 right uh he was in the NICU because he was a preemie. So he was in the NICU for like a week. And then his mom was like, hey, like, I'm ready to, you know, he's ready to come home. Yada, yada, we're ready to come home. And I remember picking him up and yeah. loading him in the back seat. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, yeah, like, I, like I'm eternally tied to it now. Like, yeah. you're eternally tied to it. I'm eternally yeah. tied to it. Like, I brought you into this world, and now you're being driven home. And something that was given to me by someone that I care a lot about. Yeah. So it's just... That, that was that moment, and then from that point forward, it was... So the Supra is basically family at this point. It's family. Yeah, it's family. It's family. It's family. Like, yeah. There's no amount of money that I wouldn't spend to fix it. Yeah. Now it might, not, now it might take me a while. <laughs> it might right. take me a while. But there's, yeah, there's no amount of money on this earth that I wouldn't spend to fix it. So what are your future plans for this uh, Supra? In all honesty, I'm probably going to leave it as it is right now. Um, but as the years progress and the OEM paint starts to fade... I'll probably just go and get it wrapped or repainted. Probably okay. go back to the original OEM color code yep. for it. Yep. Those are the only plans. And bucket seats. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you yeah, got to get yeah, bucket yeah, seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. You of know? course. But uh, no, that's it, man. Like, that's 
Yeah, I'm playing Jane now. Okay. I'm yeah, cause that, that's because you're maturing. Yeah, I'm maturing you're now. You're maturing. You're getting a little maturing. older. Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, when it comes to the Supra, what has ownership of the Supra been like? That's one question. And then two, like, if someone was looking to buy a Supra, what advice would you give them? I would say this. If you're looking to buy a Supra, understand the cost that comes with it, right? Because everyone wants one. No one ever factors in the maintenance. And what is that maintenance like? When it comes to <laughs> not only like, not only like, oh, okay, a simple like oil change, but like, what is it like having to look for parts? And, yeah, you know? like having to look for parts and like actually like, okay, like building out your build plan for it, like what you want to do with it and then taking into account, you know, the cost of things. Like, cause I can tell you right now, I personally have spent about 20K in a span of like three years. That's more than my car. <laughs> yeah, like I've spent $20,000 yeah. in the span of three years on my car. So, you know, that's what I mean by it. Like you have to understand it like, hey, like, and that's not to say that everyone has 20K just to spit out. Cause I definitely did. Yeah. It took me like, that was a lot of savings, right? That I've been saving for years. But you have to understand that with these older cars, especially like these JDM legends or like, you know, if you go into the R34s, R33s, Supras, RX-7s, NSXs, the cost of parts and maintenance for them is mm. astronomical. And that's just because one hype from Fast and Furious. That, right? that changed the whole game. Hi hype from Fast and Furious, as well as everyone who owns one is now fighting for parts for it because of how old they are, mm -hmm. right? So that's, that's going to be the biggest thing that I'm going to say when you're looking at one, trying to buy one understand the cost that comes with it now ownership for me i've, I've loved the supra yeah man yeah. like every day i've driven it every time i've gotten in it every time i've started it i love it i, yeah. I love it every single time man like there's no complaints no so complaints. so if there was one word just one word and you were like on your deathbed and you had one word to describe and someone said describe the supra what would that one word be heaven <laughs> well that's a good segue <laughs> Thank you guys so much for checking us out. Now let's go ahead. That was not a good segue. <laughs> let's check out some POV action of the Toyota Supra. So right now we are in Kyrie's Supra, and this is my first time actually driving a Toyota Supra. So I can tell you guys right off the bat, the cockpit is like, it almost feels like a jet, like an airplane. You have all of your buttons, clusters, gauges, all towards you. It's all angled towards you. This clutch, by the way, is very smooth. Oh yeah. Yeah, this clutch is very smooth. It almost, would you be surprised if I told you it's a stage three clutch? Uh, no, because I've had stage three clutches and they feel like you have to put so much leg force to get it down, yeah. where this almost feels stock. Yeah, so this is a, so this one right here is actually a stage three uh, single disc Kevlar clutch. Oh, wow. Wow, this is so smooth. <laughs> it's almost like stock. This is so smooth. So, so when I first got the car, that's exactly how it felt shifting. Really? And then when I swapped to my stage two clutch, it was actually really, really tough. Like you would have to like almost like jam it into your yeah. So when I went back, I was like, hey. I can see why you bought a second Supra. Like as I'm sitting in here, right? Even these look like, you know, the when you look at an airplane uh, turbine and it has that, like these air vents look like that. Oh, yeah. Gauge cluster is super, uh, simple you got your gas your heater your rpm your mph and then you have your air controls here but even like when you look at the way it's set up it feels like a jet in here oh yeah i like this a lot oh my gosh toyota needs to just bring <laughs> this back hey i don't know 
I've always told people that they need to bring it back, but you know, Toyota doesn't listen to the consumer. You're not lying. Oh my gosh. I'm not even, can I just say that I'm literally like quarter throttle. Yeah, it's that responsive. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can see why people are fanboys of the Supra. There's a thing, right? Okay, so like you come in here, you look at the interior, you're like, okay, this is very 90s. Everything about it's very 90s. The, the, the way it feels, the hard plastic, very 90s. But when you start driving the machine itself, you're like, oh, this is an experience. Yeah, every time, every time you drive. It's always a fun experience too. It makes you want to come back for more. Yes, yeah, like, oh. I'm sold on the Supra. Like, I don't, I don't need to take it to the track. I don't need to drive it crazy. Just like, okay, so right now we're driving, guys, and right now I'm 40 miles an hour. I'm in fifth gear, we're cruising. It's super smooth. Uh, where the suspension doesn't feel bouncy, but it's just it's just smooth. Like I'm cruising right now, yeah. right? Uh, you could definitely daily this, no problem. Yeah. No problem. And this has, mind you guys, 600 and then 800 on E, no problem. You can daily this, no problem. Okay, so when I was driving Gabe's 240 with the LS motor and then he daily drove it, I was like, okay, that's gnarly. Yeah. It, it felt gnarly. This feels so smooth. Everything about this just feels smooth. Oh yeah. Well, that's how I wanted it built, honestly. Cause it's, cause I told him, I was like, hey, like, I want it to make power. Yeah. But I want to be able to drive it every day. Yeah. Like, and not, you know, like most race cars you have, they're like, ah, oh, like they get uncomfortable. Yes. Right after a while. Yes. This? Yeah, no, no, I, no, I can take this on a trip. And he, okay, here's what I like about it. It's all driver focused where like the passenger doesn't get to touch shit. <laughs> like the passenger's like, yo, don't touch my radio. It's not even like looking at you. <laughs> like it, it, there's a separator right here where it's like, okay, this is all driver, passenger, you stay in the passenger seat. Yep. <sighs> you enjoying it? I like it a lot. I, hey. I, what I like about the power delivery is how smooth it is now of course you can punch it and you know like okay i'm punching it right right but it's it's smooth where you feel the rumbles underneath the whole time like you know there's a monster there it's just but the monster's dressed in a dress like it's pretty like <laughs> it, 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 it it it's not showing you its teeth right it's, it's like beauty and the beast yes it's like a werewolf <laughs> before transforming into a werewolf jeez man this is this this shifter is really smooth too. Yeah, yeah. I actually had a I got a tripod shifter put in to help brace it. So yeah. it smooths completely shift or shifts completely smooth. And it's crazy that it has three hundred thousand miles on it. Yep. Okay, so I can tell you the experience of a driver driving the Supra, the Beamer that passed us, the Porsche that passed us. You get looks from everybody. From grandmas to kids to people that have cars that are more expensive, everyone looks, honks, revs, or does something to the Supra. Is that pretty accurate? That's pretty accurate. It's always, it's always funny all the reactions. Cause like I'll just be cruising, right? Yeah. It's just like okay, like I'm just gonna not even do anything today. Oh no, here comes someone flying by. Yeah. It makes sense. You got the grandma staring at you while you're driving. On I the mean, freeway. even the alignment in this car is good. Like. For a car this old, with this many miles, pushing this kind of power, I am thoroughly surprised at how controlled and smooth this car is. Like, Toyota did a legendary job on this. Like, prior to this, I thought the Super was like, okay, it's legendary because of the movie Fast and the Furious. Right. That was my, my, my thought. I was like, okay, it's just like any other car. Right. Now, driving it, I'm like, oh, there's differences. Yes. There's, like... Like I would have, I would love to have driven it when it first came out to just see what that was like with new. Oh, I can tell you, it's night and day. Is it? Yeah. So the power delivery is still smooth, but without all that extra horsepower behind you, like ah, like like you're feeling that with all the extra additives. Yes. But even before the modifications, it's still like that same acceleration. You get that same, still that same acceleration, just not as not as powerful. Right. Right. 
And, and you know, so my thing was like, I always, I always, now driving it, I can tell you that I always underappreciated the Supra. Now I get it. And until you drive it, I think a lot of people would probably be like, okay, yeah, the Supra's all hype. Because you look on paper, right? And obviously we're not driving a stock version, but you're like, oh, 200 pushing, maybe 300 horsepower, rear wheel drive. It's a Japanese muscle car. Okay, cool. But then when you drive one, especially like this, that's modified, but even if you take away the power, right? I'm not talking about the power. I'm talking about the way the clutch feels, even though it's stage three, but I can just assume that a stock clutch would feel better. Right. When I think about the shifter, when I think about the gauges and I think about how everything sits, you think about the build quality, 30 years old, things are not really falling apart. No. It's still holding the test of time. Like the Supra, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay. Hey, some people don't. Well, think about this, right? The RX-7, I love the body lines of the RX-7. The RX-7 with that rotary motor automatically takes it out of the conversation for me of the Supra. Now, people can say, oh, with RX-7, you got to, you know, or RX-8, you got to know how to take care of the rotary, yada, right. yada. I've owned an RX-8. And the one thing that stays in the back of your mind is I don't know when this is going to blow up. Oh, yeah, the apex seals? Yeah. yeah. When something's going to go wrong. With the Supra, you know, getting behind the wheel, knowing that it has 300,000 miles on it, like, even the way it's sitting right now. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, like, oh, yeah, I can drive this across country, no problem. Oh, yeah. Are you like, yeah, man, I, I bet you get, man, let me tell you. I should get one. You should get one. I should look one, look for one. You should, you should, you should. Honestly, you really should. You really should, man. I like it a lot. Because you know what, like, okay, so when I drove, like, the Lambo, like, the Lambo felt like, okay, like, felt like exotic right like it felt like Supposed, super yeah. yeah when i drove the corvette i really fell in love with the corvette have you driven the c8 i haven't driven a c8 okay. but I, everyone who tells me that they've driven one tells me that it is probably the best ride they've ever had cockpit is very similar to the c8 oh that's right yeah because the c8 is all angle, angle towards the driver yes so if i could find a supra that was like maybe thirty thousand in decent shape you can get an a1 Really? NAs, yeah, they they're selling NAs for like thirty, thirty five, maybe even, uh, maybe maybe now, right with inflation. Yeah, I gotta wait, looking, I gotta wait till like they're looking thirty five, forty. Yeah, yeah. Right, but the NA automatics, you can find them for thirty. Really? And it, yeah, the NA five speeds now those are really gonna go for forty, right? But the NA automatics, you can find them for thirty. You just gotta get in these Facebook groups, man. They they sell them all the time. Do they really? All the time. Cause me, I would keep it stock. Yeah, all the time, man. They sell them all the time. They're like, oh, like this has like two hundred thousand miles on it, yada yada. And you're like, to average person, you're like, oh, that's a lot of mileage. But not for not for the Supra. Not for a two J.